Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Time for another segment on building this new ST70 kit. If there's any parts or tools that are specific to this segment or the build in general, check the description below. Can't guarantee that these links are going to be good months from now, so if they're dead, when you go to look, you may have to go hunt these parts somewhere else. Don't email me. I'm not going to hunt them up for you. So that said, let's get busy building. So I decided while I was waiting for some of these other parts to show up, I would go ahead and populate up the board. And I know the instructions tell you to put like the solid state stuff in and go ahead and put in the tube sockets. And I think that's the wrong order, at least in my personal preference. I start with putting these small value resistors in and I use my ohmmeter here to verify that all the resistors are the right value. And you just get a little clip leads like this for your meter. And there's our 1K resistor, which is R39. So I know people sometimes just read the color codes and pop them in. I like measuring the resistors to verify that they are the correct value before I solder them in the board because sometimes they're not right or they're way out of spec. And the resistors that come in these kits so far seem to be pretty close. I know in those photo stages, some of them are way off from what they're supposed to be. So I've just gotten the habit of measuring resistors. So I'm going to populate up all of these small ones first. And you may notice that I put the ones on the ends on the underside of the board. Because it shows you right here where the cutout is. And I would rather just worry about these solder tabs clearing the chassis than the resistors clearing the chassis. So, so I'll put all these on the top, put those on the bottom. The other thing I like to do is space the resistor off of the board just a little bit. And you, know, you can adjust them a little bit after you get them soldered in place. But I like to give them a little bit of distance from the board to the resistor like that. It helps give them a little breathing room. So I'm going to go ahead and solder up these guys, then solder up these, and then I got these left over. Now on these resistors on the ends, it gives you two values. There's 100K if you're going to be using a 6550 or a KT88 tubes, and you use 150K if they're EL34s. And again, they give you two different values of this resistor for the bias adjustment. And I put the 27K in, the first one I built, we ended up putting the 15Ks in to have enough adjustment room. So if you're building this as an EL34, I would highly recommend using the 15K resistors in this position instead of the 27K. Now note, there's two different 27k resistors in the instructions one of them is one of these larger 2 watt guys and then another one is the smaller size that would be used here in the bias circuit so don't get those mixed up you want to make sure you put the 2 watt one in the position let's see here what that is it's in R19 20 21 and 22 let's see what that is on the board R19, 21, 20, 22. So make sure you put the 2 watt, these larger ones, in this position. But I'm going to go ahead and solder these up first. And you're going to need some flush cutting nippers like this. These little guys, and I'll put a link in the description, they've been great. I've had these things, you can see I've melted the candles on them with the soldering iron. I can't even remember the brand. I'll put it up in the corner here what the brand is but these have been great and they've stayed sharp I built a bunch of stuff with them so highly recommend getting these they're not really expensive 
but they're you know a little more than the super cheap ones so anyway let's solder up a couple of these resistors and show you the process of doing that and I'm gonna turn my fan on here and I've got another fan behind me also so it makes sure the fumes are being blown away so I'm not breathing them and this is the solder I use this MG Chemicals RA Flux 032 solder 6040 lead 10 works really good and the kind of solder can make a huge difference on how easy things are to solder and not so one of the key things you need to do is make sure that the tips clean you come in and make sure it's tin which means you've melted a little solder on it after the soldering iron sits for a little bit it gets kind of funky and so you definitely want to do that before you start soldering and let me zoom in here and see how close I can get and we'll start down here on this end and the trick is you put the tip of the soldering iron on the pad and the lead and then you put just a little breath of solder there to kind of get started and then And the key is that you get solder on both the pin and the pad. Those are a little on the ugly side, but Here we go, that looks a little better. And like I said, if you get done in the spacing between the resistor and the board doesn't look great, you can heat it back up and move the resistor. Not a big deal. And then Cut these leads off. Just like that. And you can tell when you got a good solder connection, you'll see a little bit of solder coming through from the top side, like that. Then you know you've got a really good solder joint. So we'll do the other end of this board, and then I may knock out the rest of this off camera, just because this is a kind of a time-consuming thing, and actually, this is something I enjoy doing. I don't know what this audio is going to be like with this fan running. Let me try to see if I can remove some of the fan noise. These are on the underside of the board, so you're not going to see them. So, trying to make those pretty is a, a real prime directive here. So, yeah, while I'm soldering, I might as well knock this out. I know some of you folks just enjoy watching me solder stuff.
Now, the last time I did one of these, I made a mistake and I bridged across there. And it turns out that these two are connected on the same pad and they're really close together, so it's pretty easy to do that. And if you end up bridging these two pads together, it's not the end of the world. They are connected together anyway. And you want to make sure the resistor's hanging down off of the lead so it's, you know, leaves this nice little gap like you can see there. And then before I solder up this side, let me, let me double check that these are all even. Obviously it doesn't matter, but these are visible. So probably does make a little aesthetic difference to make sure that they're all kind of level it'll just end up with a nicer looking final product okay and then I do like kind of trimming things off as I go along because these long tails can get in your way make it a little harder to work and then obviously you'll know which ones you've soldered so you know, propping this up a little bit is probably a good idea we'll come in here and do this other row Now one thing I am going to do different than the instructions is I'm going to put the capacitors on the bottom side and a couple of reasons. One, I think they just look better and the other reason is to keep them away from the heat of the tubes. And I'm also going to put those little constant current devices on the underside as well. Let me like to cut these leads out of the way. The other thing, if you were planning on putting the capacitors on the top side, especially the coupling cap, there's one that goes across here if you were going to put the coupling caps on the top because you just you want to show off your little Mundorf caps or whatever, you would put this resistor on the bottom side so that you didn't have to go over it with the cap. So, again, if you're going to put that coupling cap on the top, then put this resistor underneath. And then you want to make sure you get the leads kind of tucked down close on this end because that goes underneath the chassis. But I'm going to put the coupling caps underneath too. So, let's solder up the rest of these little guys.
and there we go that's all our small resistors so let me go ahead and get these larger resistors put on the board and then we'll have to me the hardest part done the rest of it's fairly easy because the parts are big enough to just look at and identify but these little resistors you have to like measure them and make sure you're putting the right ones in so let me get the rest of these guys put in and maybe we'll come back and do a little more soldering so that wraps up another segment of this st70 new kit build want to add that this is not sponsored by tubes for hi-fi nor do i have any affiliation with them this kit was drop shipped to me by a viewer that commissioned me to build this for them now i don't normally do like kit builds professionally so yeah i may or may not be willing to do it in the future we'll see what that's all about but for now we're just doing this one for the channel and for some fun i want to thank all you patreon supporters and folks that make donations at my website if you find this information useful please consider joining my patreon or making a donation at my website it really helps fund future projects and keeps this channel going I also want to thank you regular viewers and especially you subscribers. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click the subscribe button. It's not a big deal to do. It doesn't cost you anything. And it helps the channel grow and other people see my fun content. So that's going to wrap this up. Until the next segment, have a nice day.